Hello everyone, this is Professor Leon, and this lecture will teach you how to find good quality evidence for research papers. When selecting quotes for your research paper, what you want to do is select a piece of evidence that explains something the reader does not already know. You want the reader to say, wow, I didn't think about that, or I didn't realize that existed. So you want to present this information in a new light for the reader. For example, in this particular source, if we picked these two sentences, we live in a world dominated by electronics. From smartphones to television, electronic devices keep us entertained, productive, and connected to our work, family, and friends. This is already something that the reader knows. So we don't really want to include this quote because it's not going to be useful for us. Instead, if we picked three quarters of parents report that their children sleep with at least one electronic device, this might be something that the reader doesn't know. And it's also a very concerning situation. So pick quotes or statistics or any other type of piece of evidence that would tell the reader what he or she does not know. Let's go over what you should never include in your research. Empty opinions, first or second person statements, generalizations, vague statements, and unsighted statements. Do not include in your research empty opinions. This means quotes that reveal the author's feelings, emotions, or hunches about the topic without any proof. This particular source by Candace Osman, in number seven, Addiction, that section in her article, she says, when we're in public and our phone dies, we feel a bit teensy bit lost. Admit it, it's hard, also hard to let go and get through a single day without the aid of technology. This is not a good quote to put into your research paper because Osmond is basically assuming people will get antsy if they lose their phones. And she is revealing her opinion on the matter without any type of support. The second thing not to include in your research is first or second person statements. These are quotes where the author is speaking in I, first person, or you, second person. These tend to be very vague statements. In this article by Tuck Sleep, number three is basically explaining what parents need to do to teach their child how to sleep properly. So it says here, rather than telling your child to turn off the computer and go to sleep, educate them on how technology affects sleep. Now, it doesn't explain how to do this, or it doesn't have any support. It really doesn't go into any details. This wouldn't be a good quote. It's written in the second person point of view, and therefore, it's assuming that the reader has children, which may not be true. Thirdly, please do not include in your research generalizations. These are quotes where the author starts with vocabulary words such as all, everyone, many, some, a few, among other words. In the article by Candace Osman, she states, we're all living wired lives and even in our sleep, we are connected. Now, not everyone lives wired lives. This is a generalization that the author is making specifically about people. Fourthly, do not include in your research vague statements, words, phrases, or sentences that are not clear and that render more questions than answers to the reader. In this article by Dr. Roos, he cites, new research indicates social media in and of itself isn't a bad thing. But in that paragraph, he does not go into details about what he means by a bad thing. This would be vague and would not be very useful for your research. Finally, do not include in your research unsighted statements. This is evidence found in a source that does not include the name of the author for that piece of evidence. In this particular source, the sentence, using a screen for 1.5 hours or more seems to be when problems start, although not everyone is affected the same way. If you notice, the author of that source is not cited and therefore it would not be a good idea to include this source in your research paper if you do not know the author behind this particular type of data. There are different types of evidence and the four specific types of evidence that I'm gonna be going over today are numerical evidence, testimonial evidence, anecdotal evidence, and personal experience. What we wanna do is make sure that we incorporate numerical evidence, testimonial evidence, and anecdotal evidence. We do not want to incorporate personal experiences because this is taken from the author's individual experience, his or her friends, family members, and acquaintances. 
First, numerical evidence. This is data that contains numbers, percentages, statistical results from scholarly studies. The article from TuxSleep cites a survey from the National Sleep Foundation. According to a 2014 survey by the National Sleep Foundation, 95% of people report using some sort of electronic device within an hour of bedtime. This is much more focused and specific than if we just included these two sentences above, which are very vague. The second type of evidence is testimonial evidence. Um, these are subject case studies, excerpts from interviews, laws, court case verdicts, and expert testimonies. The results could be from field research, such as surveys, polls, or interviews. Here is an excerpt from the NCSL National Conference of State Legislatures page from a bill that was introduced in New York that creates the offense of operating a vehicle while fatigued, which can be proven by showing that the driver fell asleep while driving or showing that the driver should have been reasonably aware that he or she had been without sleep for at least 24 consecutive hours. So this particular bill was to penalize people for what they call drowsy driving. This particular bill failed to be passed. So if the writer wanted to quote from this particular page, this would be a good source to quote from, let's say, if the writer was researching on sleep problems and transportation. Anecdotal evidence. Real life examples, current incidences, and quotes from experts that explain specific problems or issues relevant to our topic. This evidence mostly comes in the form of quotes cited throughout the source. So in this particular Science Daily article, there is a quote by AASM President Dr. Eileen Rosen. She states, individuals who are dissatisfied with their sleep, experiencing an ongoing sleep problem, or struggling with excessive daytime sleepiness or fatigue should discuss this important issue with a licensed medical provider regardless of what their wearable or other consumer sleep technology device tells them. You can use this quote for your research paper if you wanted to quote some sort of anecdotal evidence. More specific still would be a quote in which Dr. Rosen would cite a specific case study of someone who was dissatisfied with his or her sleep. Lastly, personal experience. These are examples taken from the author, his or her friends, family members, and acquaintances, or companies that the author works with. This evidence is often found in sources written using the first or second person point of view. This is the most biased type of evidence that you should avoid incorporating into your research paper. For example, in an article written by Dr. Bross, he starts the article talking about his daughter and how he's concerned about her sleep. Now, Dr. Bross may be trying to connect with many parents who are also concerned about their children's sleep. However, this would not be a good quote to incorporate into your research paper because he is biased since he's talking about his own family. Be careful with incorporating quotes that are too personal into your research paper. So to recap, do not include in your research empty opinions, first or second person statements, generalizations, vague statements, and unsighted statements. Also, consider the four types of evidence, numerical evidence, testimonial evidence, anecdotal evidence, and personal experience. You want to try to incorporate numerical, testimonial, and anecdotal pieces of evidence. You do not want to incorporate personal experience. So this is the end of this particular lecture. If you have any questions, email me or send me an instant message. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.